between three and four million suns. Some astronomers maintain that this massive yet undetectable object is a black hole, a stellar graveyard beside a stellar nursery. For a number of years, astronomers have suspected that uh, the centers of some galaxies may contain very massive black holes, which uh, uh, consume uh, large amounts of uh, interstellar material and in the process uh, become very powerful radio and infrared sources emitting uh, you know, many times the luminosities of the rest of the galaxy combined. Um, another uh, thing which has evolved out of uh, uh, observations done uh, uh, with uh, Kuiper Airborne Observatory, among other uh, uh, astronomy facilities, is uh, that they're very often the site of very intense bursts of star formation, uh, very much like uh, the kinds of activity that you see in uh, uh, nebulae in our galaxy, like the Orion Nebula or M17 or M8, uh, but on a much more uh, uh, massive scale. The things that we look for uh, in our studies of uh, galaxies with the Kuiper Airborne Observatory are uh, to try and uh, understand what, how these systems evolve. Uh, uh, at one time, uh, galaxies were just big uh, clumps of gas, and uh, under the action of gravity, uh, they uh, condensed to form stars in either uh, spheroidal distributions or, uh, in the case of spirals, in large uh, disc-shaped sh uh, distributions uh, with spiral arms. One of the things we try to understand is how these processes uh, occur uh, both initially and uh, then as a galaxy uh, uh, evolves in time. On tonight's flight, astronomers will map the closest star forming region, the Great Nebula in Orion, to detect the faint infrared radiation that has traveled across our galaxy from the nebula. The telescope and the detectors must be very cold. Otherwise, the infrared radiation from space would be lost in the heat of the instruments. Part of flight preparation is pre-cooling the telescope to about minus 20 degrees centigrade prior to takeoff. This is done using a...